Okay, we're going to look at doing homework activity number two for this section on sketching. Um, <clears throat> so this is a sheet you need to bring out. It says homework number two. Here's problem one. We'll do problem number one. Then we'll do problem number two. Problem number three is here. And then problem number four is over there. So we'll do those four. We'll start with number one. Notice for each one, we're going to draw a front view. We're going to draw a top view. And we're going to draw a right side view of that as a sketch. Now when we say sketch, we mean to um, don't use a ruler to measure the length. You just kind of look at it and say, okay, it's about this long versus this depth and then versus this height. And then we'll draw the three views of it. So to do that, you're going to need some grid paper. And what I use is a quarter inch grid. Okay, the lines are pretty light. Sometimes you buy a pad of it and it's got the little, you know, real light blue line, which is good. Uh, this one here is just a Xerox copy, uh, but it's very light because you want your line to show up um, darker than the grid. If your grid overpowers your line, then you can't see your line. The way the paper is oriented right now to you, this is the landscape where the horizontal, the longer, and the vertical is shorter. All right, eight and a half by a the 11 and a half by 8. <clears throat> what we're going to do is divide this in half. So find the midpoint and just draw a line, a dark line right down the middle. So therefore now we have two landscape, one here and one there. So we'll put problem one here. We'll put problem number two up there. All right. So to start the problem, um, I got. I made a little sheet here so you can kind of see both. You can see the ISO. This is an isometric, a pictorial, and then we're going to do the orthographic projection down here. All right. So instead of again, we're not going to measure. We're going to look at it, and uh, I start drawing the uh, three views as scaffold technique. So I'll start a corner. See this corner right here. If you call that A, we could start that down here at the bottom. So we know we're going to have a front view, top view, and a side view. That's why we orientate the paper this way, landscape, because we have two views here, and they're usually the longer versus those two. Now the pencil we're going to use, there's, there's a variety of pencils. I just use a normal 2H pencil, uh, sharpen it wherever way you can, keep a decent point. Sometimes I use an X-Acto knife to sharpen it. Sometimes I use a pencil sharpener. You can use a mechanical pencil if you want, like this. Uh, it, I'm, I have a heavy hand, so I end up breaking the lead, so these are not really good for me. And uh, <clears throat> for erasers, I use these white vinyl erasers. This one kind of clicks out, so you can get longer uh, if you want. And then you can shove that back in if you got it too long. There's that style. You can buy those. Um, you can just use a little eraser like this to, to erase your lines or you can use the eraser on the on the pencil itself so any way you want to do it don't have to do anything get anything special so I'm going to start um, and I can I can count the grids because they are grid I'm just going to look at the length and the height and just say okay I'll start here and just get now sketching means that we're going to just not use a straight edge just use the grid and I'll draw the what I think looks like the proportion of the of the length versus the height and the heights prior there and there there's my scaffold technique when you draw these box these scaffold boxes you draw them real light okay because you're going to have to erase some of it so if you draw it too dark initially then you got you're going to have a heck of a time erasing it now I'm going to draw the top view and remember the top view is right above the front view so I can project up lines that represent my visual projection Usually we want to put about an inch between the views, okay, or thereabouts. And you think, well, how deep is it? So I can say, well, I'll say one, two, three, four, five. I'll make it six grids deep, and I'll create my scaffold box. So there's my scaffold box for my top view. So there's my front view. There's my top view. And then my right side view, let me go ahead and draw those arrows in on this one. So there's my front there's my top looking down. There's my right side view looking that way. Right side. 
just like in a house, if I stand in front of the house and look at it, I see the height of the house. If I'm in a helicopter or a plane looking down, I see the top of the house. If I stand on the side of the house and look at it, I'm seeing an elevation, a right side, or sometimes you could see the left side, sometimes you look at the back, all right? But in our exercises, we're doing front, top, and right side only. Now to do the right side over here, we just project our height. Our height is already known, so we project that across. We'll put whatever distance we have there, we can kind of repeat that, three grids here. And then how many grids deep is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's your scaffold for your right side view. Now we go ahead and add the detail. So it looks like it goes up, over, up, over, up. So however you want to do it, sometimes I take the midpoint of my object, so you can take a midpoint of it and go to the right and go to the left equally. It looks like it's equal symmetrical. So um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, so we go 3, 4, 5, and a half is the midpoint right there. So I can come over here, looks like about like this, all right, come down, come across, down. So there's my stair step effect. And I'll just match what I have over here to the other side. And I went over a grid here, down two, over two. So there's my. Now when I'm satisfied with what I, what I have, then I go ahead and I call burning it in or darken it in. And notice I'm just, just freehand. We're not using instruments. Okay, darken it in, which is known. All right, so there's my front view. Now what do I do with the... the I can erase I can erase these lightly. I can leave them in a little bit so it shows uh, my projection, right? It shows my projection going up to my top view. Now <clears throat> to complete the top view, you just take this point, we bring it to here, project, and then this line goes across, right? If I'm looking down, I'm gonna see this edge and this edge. So those are two here. Then I say this point here, I project up. There's that. This point here project up. There's that one. And then this is that edge and this is that edge. So I think the top view is complete. I just go ahead and burn it in. And then I'll burn in the, the here. Okay, so there's my front view. I'll label it front. How's that? Front, top, and then we got to do the side view, don't we? Again, we were six grids deep. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And to do the side view, we're just going to project across. So the height is already there, right? Project that. The bottom. Yep. This edge right there. Bring that across. This edge here, bring that across. And looking at the side, you're going to see this, this, and this, which is those three steps. And that's it. So I'll go ahead and darken those in. We'll call that the RS for right side. And I think we are complete with the three. So notice, so I fill that space up my uh, landscape what you don't want to do is make a real teeny tiny um, let's I'll do it up here on this little thing if you made your front view like this um, just, just roughly make it there's the top view so this is too small say so these are too small look how my size fills the space Right, I would consider this too small in scale. All right, this is about right. You don't want to make it so huge where your your lines are actually touching the edges of your paper or your you know edges of your border. You want to have some gap here, but this fills the space nice. Um, a couple of relationships again. 
um, if we call this the width and what happened here we call this the width okay W we call this the height H the relationship see that relationship the width is from the top view and the front view the height is from the side view and the front view and then we have one more which is the depth D which is the depth of the part and the relationship is the depth here is the same as D here I, th I feel depth is probably the most uh, one that's misunderstood so yes there is your uh, sketch number one and we'll move on to sketch number two